Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, from talking about Obasanjo and uh, what happened in 2004, we move into a totally different conversation now, and that is uh, Nigeria's broadband penetration. Uh, yesterday, of course, it was a part of the news that we had hit 45.43% uh, penetration, and it's something that has been, I believe, celebrated. To take a closer look at what this means, we have uh, Mr. Ido Akinde, the founder of uh, Bullying MVP Lab. Good morning and thanks for joining us, uh, Mr. Akinde. Good morning, sir and Ma. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, it's our pleasure. Let, You're let's, welcome. Let's kick start with um, talking about what you know what the significance of this is. I know that the um, minister, Issa Pantami, had spoken earlier, and of course the NCC had uh, looked at a projection of 70% broadband penetration by 2021. We currently are at 45. Um, what does this mean, generally? So, um, on the macro level, that is very, very positive news. And I should say that... Um, the general strategic high-level direction that the Minister of um, IT, ICT and the Director General of the NIDA, Nigerian Information Technology Development Agency have adopted is, you know, quite commendable um, in the sense that we have seen the kinds of moves, the kinds of policies, the kinds of high-level um, directions that we've been advocating for for quite a while, we've been seeing those things, uh, you know, appear to be, to now be taken serious. Uh, one of them is providing a solid information infrastructure. One of the components of which you would call a broadband, you know, a solid broadband backbone. There's still quite some work to be done. There's still a lot of investments that need to be made in the sector, in the, especially the ICT infrastructure space. But at least, at least this is a solid step in the right direction. Um, the other question is, um, it may not necessarily, this may not necessarily be a direct win of the Ministry of ICT. It may just be an endorsement of the groundwork that they have created for the private broadband providers who are the ones taking the risks and laying and doing the groundwork uh, uh, to sell to new customers. So this is like an endorsement that they have done a good job to provide, as we've always said in Nigeria, a conducive environment for these private sector players to be. So, or, uh, how will this translate to a growth in our digital economy? Because that seemed to be the you know, narrative being pushed by the ministry. Okay. Okay. So if you remember, I started by talking about the um, the macro. So if we go to the micro, right? Um, better broadband infrastructure, all things being equal, should result in better internet service quality of experience for yourselves and myself, right? The people on the streets. Better quality of internet experience for all of us should result in more and more small businesses having the confidence to be able to take their businesses online, to be able to receive payments, to be able to, to offer their services through digital means, and to be able to generally you know, leverage ICT for greater efficiencies, reductions in costs, which should boost the economy. As I said, all things being equal. Okay. Oh, well, hopefully we can talk about, you know, all things not being equal before we wrap this up. Um, but I, wanna, I want you to share your thoughts on uh, some of the details. It says uh, we added about 4 million extra subscribers between September and October 2020. Sometime earlier in the year, um, it was about 3.3 million in May, I believe. So um, is there any specific uh, details on what areas these numbers are growing um, some people would argue that northern Nigeria is starting to also grow very much, you know, with regards to uh, uh, internet penetration and the use of social media and some other things. Um, so is this 4 million added subscribers generally across the country? Are there specific areas that are starting to show, you know, growth? Okay. Okay, so quick disclaimer. I don't have the details. I don't have a breakdown of that. Um, I don't have a breakdown, right? So I don't know. 
uh, about that. However, um, I'm involved in the startup ecosystem, right? Uh, I'm a mentor with the Founder Institute, the Impact Hub, and the ISN, the Innovation Support Network. A startup mentor with those organizations, with those ecosystems. What I have also observed by, by experience is that the, as you as, as you rightly alluded, the the general startup uh, environment, the startup space, the spirit of starting up new uh, new businesses, aka new technology empowered businesses in the north has significantly increased in the last six months to one year. So there are a lot more. So so right now um, the 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 spirit, the entrepreneurial spirit of founding new technology enabled technology empowered companies is starting to grow beyond Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Abuja. You know, so you have places like Kano, um, Kaduna, you know, other places in the north that are also experiencing this kind of spirit. Those kinds of entrepreneurial spirits to have the confidence to launch technology ventures can only come when um, the citizens feel like. They are the tools to create those businesses are in place. It, it both to create the businesses and you know to also assure that the consumers who will consume those businesses have the kinds of data quality to be able to con consume their services. All right. I, I was going to ask you about the uh, snag when it comes. To, yes, we are penetrating bro uh, uh, broadband wise. What about the aspect of uh, availability of power? Because they both go hand in hand and how this might diminish the projected returns um, if um, we were to, you know, milk the expansion and, and extend, uh, expansion of our broadband. Thank you very much. Good question. So I always say that, um, I mean, I might as well be brutally honest. I always say that there's absolutely no excuse for, for Nigeria to, ha to have the kind of power problems that we have in the 21st century, talk less 20 years into the 21st century. There's absolutely no reason why we should have the kind of power that we have today. Uh, some people will say that uh, um, it's not so much the legal, it's not so much the technical frameworks, you know, that technical exclusives exist, but it's, but it's the fact that there are legal frameworks that, you know, kind of hinder the, 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 the advancement of that sector, blah, 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 blah. But, oh, but, but as far as I'm, I'm concerned, all those are excuses. Yes, that is a major, major, major problem. Right, especially given the fact that technology service creation, as well as technology service consumption on the consumer side, both the demand and the supply side, rely on power. Um, you've rightly called it out as a potential um, threat, right, to the achievement of these of, of these objectives. And I will continue to say that um, all the players should, you know, private sector, government sector, should just solve this problem. You know. Nigeria is not really, really, really going to grow significantly until we fix this power problem. Having right. said that, I also like to add a warning, right? I mean, in you 20 know, seconds, if you please, we're told here. we're I'm out sorry, of time. Space. Sorry, were you saying something? Yes, I was trying to say, please wrap up in 20 seconds if you can. Uh, we're told we're out of time. Okay. I also always like to add a warning, right? That if the powers, if the current players do not solve this problem, private sector and public sector, the net effect is that people will generally, as the prices of alternative power drop, things like solar, as the prices of solar drop, people will generally individually boycott. The same way everybody boycotted public water and started to install their own private water systems, aka boreholes. What will happen in the long run if they don't fix the power problem is that they will discover that there are no customers anymore. Everybody right. has fixed some kind of solar or biogas powered type of individual power system. In we'll have to leave it there, Mr. Ido Akinde, um, mm -hmm. on the conversation. So much to talk about, but very limited time. time. Uh, thank you for your time and your thoughts. All right, thank you. All right, I hope uh, this conversation also includes um, in ensuring that the telcos and service providers also improve on their services. Well, uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> I, I was actually reading something about the uh, Nigeria's Economic Recovery Growth Plan 2017 to 2020. Um, they recognized the need to, you know, grow our digital economy. But that was the target was 2020. We're now in 2020. <laughs> we are still well, not I mean, there. And at the same time, you know, how are we growing our digital economy and also threaten to shut down social media?
Okay, oh, no. that is a. <laughs> I didn't see that one we'll coming. Go on a short break. Hello. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.